The Zeppo. The gang attempts to avert the worst apocalypse yet, while we focus on Xander being an idiot. We open with the gang hunting some kind of monsters underground, and Faith ends up stabbing one with a cool sword. At first I thought this whole sequence was a dream, but it turns out it's not. Giles says he would have more information about the monsters if Moo hadn't confiscated his stuff, and it was nice they still addressed that. And I wondered where Xander was, but it turns out he's just buried under some stuff. Since he has no actual skills or ability to do anything. And for some reason, when the characters bring that up, he disagrees with them. Like he has some kind of value as a person. <laughs> <laughs> the next day, Xander in his barf-colored sweater <laughs> shows that he sucks at football too when he misses a catch. And he ends up knocking a kid's meal out of his hand. The kid, whose name is Jack O'Toole, says he's going to get his friends together to beat Xander up. For a second, though, I thought he might be hitting on him. <laughs> you want me starting something? What? It was weird. Okay. And after the interaction, Cordelia mocks him for being a little weakling that contributes and has contributed nothing to this show from the very beginning. <laughs> and she compares him to Jimmy Olsen and Zeppo Marx. Two references in a row that felt very out of character. He talks to Oz about what it means to be cool and what he can do that nobody else can do in order to start being cool. Thankfully, we cut mid-scene to Giles talking about an end-of-the-world threat. He says there is an apocalypse cult trying to bring about the end of the world by opening the Hellmouth. And during this conversation, Oz comes in to lock himself in the weapons cage due to his werewolfism. Again, during a school day in the library... Buffy and Willow are recounting that the Sarlacc almost came out of the Hellmouth back in Prophecy Girl. And they seem to be taking things more seriously than usual. When Xander pulls up in a vehicle that supposedly makes him cool, that it turns out he rented from his uncle. Buffy mentions the impending doom, and Xander asks how he can help. Cut to him getting donuts. And Cordelia runs into him again. And I thought there was going to be something where she's following him throughout the episode, but that's not the case. She mocks him in his car... But then a random hot girl shows an interest, and Xander offers to take her for a ride. They end up at the bronze, where Xander is getting bored of listening to her talk about all the car guys she's dated, and Xander even gets excited to see Angel to get him out of it. Angel wants to talk to Buffy about the apocalypse, saying it might be more than they expect, but he tells Xander he should just stay out of harm's way and leaves. Car girl wants to go for another drive, and Xander ends up running into a car with Psycho inside. Buffy and Willow are studying at the library, when Giles comes in to say the council won't answer his calls, so he's going to try to contact the spirit guides who can see into the future. The discussion turns to Xander, and they say he should stay out of harm's way, and we cut back to him in harm's way. The psycho pulls a crocodile dundee on Xander. No, a knife. <laughs> <laughs> and the car girl says she's bored. A cop witnesses the interaction, but Xander chooses not to implicate Psycho, which gets him on his good side. The psycho asks if they want to have fun cruising around, and tells Xander to go pick up the boys. Who turn out to be zombies. The car girl runs away screaming, and while they go to resurrect more idiots, Giles attempts to commune with the spirits. They say they won't help him. Because he never called them about all the other threats they've dealt with. He encounters Xander, who asks if they need any help, but he tells him he should stay out of harm's way. Buffy goes to Willie's bar, which has been trashed by demons looking for Angel, and they said that tonight was the night. Xander's driving around with a dead crew who are committing criminal acts, and he sees Willow. She says it's happening tonight, before telling Xander she loves him, hopefully in a platonic way this time, and leaving to go to Buffy. And before he can react, the dead crew says he needs to be initiated, which means he needs to die. And the psycho reveals that he has already gone through that. Xander manages to get away, and he drives off with their stolen supplies, but the zombie kids go back into the hardware store to get more. Xander drives by Faith, who is fighting a demon, and he runs him down before driving her to her motel. She ends up coming onto him, and they bang. And after the deed is done, she kicks him out. In the library, Willow has to trank Oz because the incoming apocalypse is getting him agitated. Why they had to open the cage to do that, I'm not sure, but okay. <laughs> Xander looks at the supplies left by the goons and figures out they are planning to make bombs. So he goes to find Buffy. We cut to Buffy and Angel professing their love for each other due to the world-ending threat. And Angel says this is the worst thing they've ever faced. It was very over-the-top melodramatic. They're interrupted by Xander, who sees this is a bad time, and backs out. While back at the library, Giles is in the process of performing a dangerous spell with Willow. And Willow says they've moved Oz someplace else because the library isn't safe. 
<laughs> if they have another place to put him, don't put him in the library in the first place. And it turns out the undead gang is setting up their bomb underneath the school with a 60-minute timer. Sanders sees the dead crew and manages to find out where they built the bomb. Before he can learn how to defuse it, Xander accidentally beheads this guy with a mailbox. We cut to the library, where the Sarlacc is emerging from the Hellmouth, and is thankfully practical effects, not like that idiotic snake-looking thing from Band Candy. The gang chases Xander to the school, and he re-kills one of them by dropping a vending machine on him. And then one of the others gets eaten by one of the cult demons. Xander manages to make it down to the boiler room, where he has two minutes to defuse the bomb, but Psycho is down there also. Xander points out that the bomb is about to explode, and Psycho won't be able to come back after being blown apart. Xander says he's ready to be blown up. And the Psycho finally gives in and disarms the bomb like a little bitch. After Xander calls him out for being a little bitch, he walks away saying he doesn't want to see him again. So he basically just leaves him there with the bomb, which he could presumably just reset the timer on. But instead, he decides to go out another door where Oz eats him. <laughs> And in the library, the gang is still fighting the Sarlacc. Cut to the next day, where everyone is covered in scars and bruises, with some surprisingly good makeup, talking about how difficult the struggle to close the Hellmouth was. In a vague exchange of the events that transpired. They talk about how no one will know what they did, and when Xander shows up, they say he should be glad he wasn't around. And we close with Xander encountering Cordelia, who attempts to shame him again, but he coolly walks by. <laughs> the Zeppo overall at the beginning of this episode when it was clear it was going to be focused on xander finding himself my first thought was spare me but i ended up really liking this one i never thought i would say that about a xander themed episode the humor worked pretty much the entire way through and i think it was more because it was focused on the events and not xander himself the fact that the show played into its melodrama so tongue-in-cheek was refreshing all the serious stuff was played the way it would have in an actual serious episode but framing the story with that humorous tone made it work really well. Everything was so focused in this long-running joke, and the joke was a good joke. The camera work, the cuts between scenes, the dialogue, all of it was pretty good. All the characters were written with their strengths in mind, and while some elements didn't really serve any purpose, like the car girl who I thought was gonna do something, overall this episode worked for me. The faith sex thing felt like it was only done to be brought up later. I don't really see anything coming out of that. I thought the bomb was going to tie into somehow blowing up the Sarlacc and inadvertently closing the Hellmouth. I kind of did too. It would have tied in with the humor of this episode. And outside of this story, I'm wondering how long it's going to take Buffy to get a new watcher. I appreciated the continuity of this one, bringing up Moo, bringing up Oz being a werewolf, stuff like that. It was nice. My biggest fear is that the show is probably going to go back to the eye-rolling melodrama of episodes past, probably in the next episode. The fact that they've called it out for being so ridiculous and then going back to it wouldn't really work for me. But I thought this was a really well-written episode. I was very pleasantly surprised. I gave an A-. minus. Dang, that's high. Yeah, I know. Is that the highest you've ever given an episode? I think so. So you thought this was the best episode so far of the whole show? It was the one that was the most engaging for me. Okay. It definitely wasn't my favorite episode so far. I thought Passion was better. I thought Prophecy Girl was better. I don't know, but I know you like the, the Loaxana episodes, and this was kind of like that, I guess. Only the one where she was naked. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, that happened more than once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I give this episode a B. It was a very unique episode for the show, and I agree that it was good to see the show make fun of itself in what felt like an authentic way, especially the stuff with Angel and Buffy. I thought that was really funny. They also did a good job of exploiting Xander's character traits in an entertaining way. Like you said, that could have been really annoying or frustrating, but it wasn't. I liked how they talked up the apocalypse so much and then just kept it in the background, and it was cool to see the Sarlacc Hydra thing show up again. The undead guys that Xander had to deal with were not as interesting as everything else, so I kind of wish they had come up with something a little better for that, but I didn't hate it, and I actually thought the makeup throughout this episode was surprisingly good. I questioned the scene with Xander and Faith, because, like you said, nothing really came of it in this episode, but I am also assuming they'll come back to it later. This episode was definitely a step up from what we usually get, and I wish more episodes were as intelligently written as this one. Me too. Me too.